Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and forever. Amen. Amen. Good afternoon, beloved Church, and welcome to tonight's Eucharistic service, being the Sunday or the, fourth, the third Sunday after the resurrection of our Lord and our Saviour, Jesus Christ. You will notice that the following weeks, until the, the Sunday of the Pentecost, the Gospel readings are, a, um, are from the farewell discourse. Um, of Christ, which are recorded in John chapters 14 to 17. And it goes back to read, reread what Christ had promised or what Christ had foretold to his disciples in regards to his resurrection. Now, until the actual resurrection, his disciples were still a little bit dismayed and they didn't understand what he had promised them, what he had foretold, foretold them. The discourse I read to you now from the Gospel, chapter 14 of John, it, uh, it follows immediately after Jesus had somehow rebuked Simon and said to him that before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. And then the disciples would have felt troubled because they would have thought, well, if Peter being the head of the prelates is going to deny the Lord three times, what's going to come upon us? And then Christ turns around and says, let not your hearts be troubled, believe in God also believe in me. As we are living in the post-resurrection era, we read to learn and to confirm, to confirm and to be encouraged by all the promises and what Christ has foretold, all those who believe in him, all those who love the Lord, all those who adhere and take heed to what the Lord says. I'm going to preach on the gospel, the lection reading Shamasha prepared and and um, presented to you Isaiah chapter 56 verses 1 to 8 thus says the Lord now before I start getting into it I'd like to bless you all and you have already been blessed not by me not just by you know, your, your, your priests and, and what you do and your faith but there is a special blessing for you today and for all those today who have not profound the Lord's Sabbath let me tell you a little bit about the Sabbath, which is the day that the Lord rested. The Sabbath in the Old Testament was the seventh day, obviously. The Lord had rested on that day. Not that he was tired, not that he was sick of working, but everything that the Lord created according to his perfect will, according to his perfect design, his intelligent design, it all came to fulfillment. And when he had fulfilled everything, the Lord rested, meaning he had fulfilled everything. Everything that was good and meek for his glory and for the world, for the creation and for mankind. Today's Sabbath, which is the Sunday, which is the first day of the week, is the day on which our Lord Jesus Christ, praise and glory be to his name, fulfilled the act, the deed, the plan, the perfect design of salvation. For almost six to seven thousand years, God continued to work with mankind to bring salvation, to one more time restore mankind to that glory that he had before the, or when he was created. Today we come and celebrate the Sabbath being the first day of the week. Hoshiba is our Sabbath. Because Christ fulfilled everything. Christ was resurrected. Let's put it in other words. Christ rested because everything was fulfilled. And it was on this day that he showed himself to his disciples. And it was on this day that he first showed himself to Mary Magdalene when she was at the tomb searching for the Lord. So Isaiah writes almost 4,000 years ago, or maybe a little bit less than that, and says, Thus says the Lord, preserve justice and do righteousness, for my salvation is about to come and my righteousness is to be revealed. And then look at what the Lord says. How blessed is the man or woman who does, who does this, meaning preserves righteousness and justice, and the son of man who takes hold of it, that means holds on to it, who keeps from profaning the Sabbath and keeps his friend and from doing any evil. And he continues about people who uphold the Sabbath. What happened in the Sabbath in the Old Testament? On the Sabbath, it was very strict. We're chachalinian today. Those who have to work, obviously, 
you know, they have the opportunity to come to, to, to worship on a Sunday morning or Sunday evening as well. But according to the Jewish custom and law that even writing was prohibited on a Sabbath. You're only permitted to write a few words, seven words. If you were to write eight words, you'd have to pay a fine because you've broken the Sabbath. You would only, you were only permitted to work, walk a certain distance. More than that, any further than that, you had broken the Sabbath. That's why I remember in, um, in Australia, uh, this, the Jewish synagogue in the city, they were all, they were all in the high areas, um, the, every, all the Jewish, the Jewish community were congregated around the synagogue so that their distance wouldn't break their Sabbath. I remember there was a big row with the city, we call it council. The Jewish community had demanded that the city would change the traffic lights. You know when you walk up to a traffic light, you have to press the button? That was classified as working on a Sabbath. They demanded that the city would change the traffic lights, that they would be censored. So as soon as a Jew, anyone, not just a Jew, as soon as a person would come up to the traffic lights, the traffic lights would censor and would change. And it happened, obviously. Everything happens. When the Jews ask, the world says, when the Jews say jump, the world says how high. But it happened. Why? Because this was their tradition. This was their understanding. And these were the religious at laws that they had to uphold. And there was nothing wrong with them because God had commanded. Now, sometimes they went a little bit too far and put many yokes upon people's shoulders as Christ says, and they wouldn't dare touch themselves with their fingers. What is our Sabbath today, beloved church? We can walk as much as we want on a Sunday. We can depress as many traffic lights as we want on a Sabbath. But how do we uphold the Sabbath? First, we need to uphold and preserve justice, judgment and righteousness. To understand what is righteousness, not according to how man perceives righteousness. You know, when someone says to you, well, she hurt me, so I went back and I got her back, I paid back, I retaliated, that's justice according to mankind. But we are to understand what is justice in the eye of God, what is righteousness in the eyes of God. What is it that we need to do to not to profane the Sabbath, beloved? And that's what I said, blessed are you. We come to the house of the Lord on the first day of the week. The first day of the week, our new covenant Sabbath being the first day of the week, is a day of worship, a day of praise, a day of prayer, a day of the church coming together as the body of Christ. And different members. That is what we do. And why we say that it's not because the church is, has, has, um, has emphasized this. It's not because it's a rule that was made by the synod. It's a biblical canon. It's an apostolic canon. And it goes back and ties with the, uh, the, the Old Testament tradition or the Old Testament law. In the Acts, the book of the Acts. Oh, I have it. Sorry. It's wrong. In the book of the Acts. Chapter 20, and let's read some verses. Beloved, let's go back. What am I doing? There you go. In the book of the Acts, chapter 20, verse 7. On the first day of the week, Sunday, Hoshiba, our Sabbath, when we were assembled to break the Eucharist, the apostles would come together with the faithful. What would they do? They would break not bread as it has been translated in some of the versions. No, the Eucharist, meaning the body and blood of Christ. This is what we must do. This is how we uphold our Sabbath, is to come to the house of the Lord, to partake and assemble in the breaking of the Eucharist. Again, in Acts chapter 2, verse 24, we read... Shtani, you got to help me we read, and they were faithful in the doctrine of the apostles, this is on the first day of the week, and participated in prayer and in the breaking of the Eucharist. That's why Kasha always is on your back and texting you. You're going to receive text. There's about 72 people on this text. 72 people. And you're going to be reminded, today the Holy Eucharist will be offered in the English language. 
If you haven't gone to the morning mass, come to the English language. It's not about numbers. It's not a numbers game. We could have seven people and we will do, we will break the bread and we will praise God. We will partake in the Eucharist. But this is our spiritual obligation so that we receive the blessing from God so that we are not those who profane the Sabbath. When the Super Bowl is on and, and football starts, I can't come to church. Oh, Rabbi, the Niners are worth playing. Okay, the Niners play at 3 o'clock. You've got two hours. Oh no, it's a barbecue from the morning. What about the Sabbath? What about the Lord's Day? Profaning it. You're not going to come and, and worship God. I came last week. Okay, well then when you pray to the Lord and you say, Lord, I need your help. How about he turns around and says, I helped you two months ago. Why do you come ask me for help again? No, just that's it. No, we are to uphold the Sabbath as the Lord says so that we may receive the blessing. Look at what Paul says in Corinthians. Upon the first day of every week, and these are our obligations on the Sabbath. Let each of you put aside and keep in his house whatever he can afford. You know, people ask me about 10%. That we must give 10%. We must give 10%. No, we must give what we can afford. 10% was an Old Testament commitment. An Old Testament law. When Christ fulfilled it, and gave us the new covenant in the New Testament, we don't hear of the 10%, but Paul says that whatever we can afford, it could be 30%, it could be 2%. Whatever we afford, we must bring on the first day of the week so that there may be no collection when I come. This is the Sabbath, beloved. This is when we come to the house of the Lord, Shema Shared, and Isaiah says, My house is a house of prayer. When you come, you pray. You offer your, your, your praise of the lips, as Paul says in, in Acts. I'm sorry. In Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5, let us offer up at all times unto God the sacrifices of praise, which are the fruits of the lips, which give thanks to his name. This is what we do when we come to the house of the Lord. This is our obligation, beloved, to the Lord on the Sabbath. What happened on the first day of the week, we read again. This is really annoying me now. Away from you. You know what? Forget it. God will be glorified. John 20, verse 1. On the first day of the week, early in the morning. Some people don't like coming to church early in the morning. When we change the service time from 10 to 9, a few people, I must admit, not many. Ooh, Robbie, that's less, one hour less sleep. Look at what happened early in the morning. And this is not 9 o'clock. This is when the sun was rising. On the first day of the week, early in the morning, while it was yet dark, Mary of Magdalene came to the tomb and she saw that the stone was removed from the tomb. Everything was completed on the first day of the week. We come to celebrate this. We come to remember this, beloved. This is what God is talking about when, when it comes to profaning the Sabbath. Nothing to do with walking and pressing buttons, no. But coming to the house of the Lord to partake in His glory and to partake in ascribing praise unto His holy name. In Hebrews chapter 10 verse 25, Paul writes, And let us not forsake our congregation as it is custom with some, but pray with one another. I can pray in my room. The Lord says, go in your room, close your door and pray in secret. No, but Paul is saying, come together to pray together. And so much the more as you see that day to be approaching. What day? The day of salvation as Isaiah writes. For the day of salvation is approaching. For my salvation is about to come and my righteousness, righteousness, not grace, mercy. Take heed to these words, beloved. For my salvation is about to come 
and my righteousness to be revealed. When the Lord returns, praise and glory be to his name, he will not return with mercy and grace. He will return with righteousness to judge the dead and the living. So when we stand before the Lord, will we receive this blessing that he has bestowed upon us? Will we partake of this blessing and say, Oh Lord, I tried my best to uphold your Sabbath the first day of the week. I praised you. I, I beseeched you. I prayed. I confessed. I received that solution. And I partook in your holy body and blood. Lord, have mercy on me. Thus says the Lord. Praise and glory be to his holy name.